Have you ever watched a house being built? Well, if so, take a moment to imagine the process, all the pieces from the ground up being placed together to make something useful and maybe even beautiful. Now, with those images of building a house from the ground up clear in your mind, listen carefully to what I'm going to say next. Before a thing can be made useful, something must be broken. Think about this. Before rocks can be brought in to become a part of a foundation, they first have to be blasted from a quarry and then crushed down to a usable size, the perfect size to play their part within the foundation. Before lumber can be milled, a tree must first be chopped down and then sawn into pieces that will fit together perfectly within the framework of the house. Other trees are chopped down and then shredded and ground into small pieces and then pressed into plywood and particle board to be used in the construction. And I could go on and on with examples. Before a thing could be made useful, in some way, it's got to be broken. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you feel broken? Maybe broken by disappointment, broken by grief and sorrow because of loss or some other pain. Maybe you feel broken by your own weakness, some physical, mental, or emotional issue, broken perhaps by your own failures and your sin. Well, to you and me, typically we see times of brokenness as tragedies. We think this is the worst thing that could have ever happened. It's tragic, it's horrible, it's all dark and hopeless, and maybe we even say, I might as well just give up. After all, I'm broken, and broken things just need to be thrown in the trash. Have you ever felt that way? Well, I have, too. Well, let me tell you what I now believe to be true. Those things that to us seem like tragedies are, for God, opportunities to be used for His glory. For us as human beings, again, when something is broken, we tend to cast it aside and we call it useless junk within the church. When a person is broken, sadly, look at history, the same thing happens and how we miss out. See, I believe that in God's economy, those things that have not yet been broken, <laughs> can't be used to their full potential. Those that have yet to come to know their own humanity and all of its weakness, frailty, sinfulness, and shortcomings, they have yet to come to truly know and understand the words of the great hymn Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Now, I don't know about you, but when difficulties come, when I feel an experience being torn down and broken, I tend to whine and cry and wonder why. Why me, God? But then as more time passes, sometimes it takes years and years I'm able to look back and see that it was those times of being broken and even the times of my greatest failures and sin, the greatest heartbreaks and sorrow, that God was working something within me to shape me. And that has to be the case. Even my greatest stumblings, God was at work, or else what Paul tells us in Romans 8 28 is not true. Paul tells us that we know that God is working all things for the good, for those that love him, for those who are the called according to his purpose. I now realize that in those times when I am most aware of my brokenness, that's the times when God seems to work through me in the greatest ways. Because no longer is my focus on me and what I can do or what I can offer, because I realize I have nothing to offer. And so my focus, my trust, my hope is all in Him and nothing else. Listen, if you're in the process of being broken, for whatever reason, realize that God is at work in it. Even if it's brokenness that's come about as a result of some big sin in your life, some way that you've blown it so badly that you even surprised yourself. Listen, you didn't surprise God. God is working in you. He's working all things according to the counsel of his will. He's making something, building something that will someday blow your mind with its beauty and wisdom as you come to know his grace. Eventually, you and I are going to be able to look back and realize that the things that were the greatest tragedies or what we perceived as the greatest tragedies and heartaches, those moments where we thought God had let us slip through his fingers or he had abandoned us, those times of our greatest 
failures, falterings, and sin, the times of loss, sorrow, heartache, suffering, being misunderstood, rejected by others, maybe even hated by others, whatever it may be, someday we're going to look back and see that it was God's way of bringing us to something better. Again, we tend to look at broken things as loss, but God turns them into gain. In nature, in our culture, so often broken things are cast aside, but in grace, it seems that God will never use a man or woman greatly until he or she has been broken. Sometimes that breaking process can take a very long time, and it can be very, very painful. As we finally come to understand something Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, as he talked about the people who God truly uses as instruments of grace in the lives of others, God's, or Paul spoke of God working in and through the foolish, the weak, the base, those that are nothing apart from him. What a process. <laughs> what a process to discover how foolish, weak, base, and nothing we truly are in and of ourselves. It's humiliating and humbling. Yet at the same time to discover that our God has loved us all along. That he loved us before we had ever even given him a thought. That his love for us was demonstrated and proven at the cross. Man, as I think about brokenness and growing in grace... I remember something I heard on the radio quite a while back, years ago. A seminary professor named Steve Brown was talking about his young seminary students. And he said often they would come to him in their zeal, wanting to share with their teacher how through their studies they had gained some incredible insight into the grace of God. And Steve said something like this. He said, my common response to these young, zealous men who think they know so much about the grace of God is this. Son, you have not lived long enough nor have you sinned greatly enough to even have an opinion about the grace of God. In other words, Steve was saying they hadn't lived long enough yet to be broken and to become dependent and resting solely on and in Christ rather than self. My name is James Flanders and God has broken me and then rebroken me as he's taken me down a path of humility. He's broken me by revealing the weakness of myself. And he has broken me and he has been teaching me not to trust in anything I am, anything I could do, anything I could offer, or anything I could promise, but instead to rest in his amazing love and grace daily poured out on me and proven at the cross where Jesus suffered, bled, and died for my sin. Now I realize there's still some breaking that needs to take place in my life as God grows me up and teaches me to walk the path of grace.